Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at an introduction to SUVAT formulas so we can answer questions from exercise 9c. So, uh, what does SUVAT mean? It's not a word, but what it means is uh, it's an abbreviation of S-U-V-A-N-T where S-U-V-A-N-T are abbreviations of a element within how a particle moves. So S stands for displacement, U is initial velocity, V is final velocity, A is acceleration, and T is time. So we're looking at how particles travel, particularly particles, because we don't want to include air resistance and friction and all of those other horrible things. We're looking at a simplified model here of how a particle moves, how it can accelerate um, from a starting speed to a final speed over a certain time period, and how much it moves by during that time period. So we're looking at constant acceleration only, so the change at which the velocity is happening by is, is constant. We're not going to have um, it starting off or it uh, accelerating nice and slowly and then increasing its velocity as it goes on. None of that rubbish, just constant velocity the whole time, constant acceleration the whole time. So um, let's have a look at some formulas that link these five uh, letters together. And we're going to see five different formulas that link um, four of these different letters together in a certain way. So acceleration, um, first of all we look at acceleration on our displacement time graphs or our velocity time graphs and it was the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Remember that on that video I wrote out this formula here, change in V divided by change in T because that's what it is. Now the change in velocity is effectively the final velocity take away the starting velocity, that's how much it's changed by, and divided by time, so divide by T. And that's our first formula, and generally it's written like this, V equals U plus AT. This is the first of our five SUVAT formulas that link four of these letters together. Notice how S is not in this formula. Each of these five formulas do have a missing letter. And the, uh, the another one of the formulas here, we're only going to look at two in this video here, is that distance moved is equal to the average speed times by time. So the distance moved, or the displacement, is equal to uh, the average of our speed. So over a certain amount of time, we'll have an average speed that uh, is halfway in between our initial velocity and our final velocity, and we times that by how long we've been travelling for, so times by t. And this is our second SUVAT formula here. Uh, another way of looking at the second one here is by the formula um, for the area of a trapezium. Notice how it's a trapezium on its side. Uh, this here is A, this here is B, this here is T. So the area of this the area of this trapezium here is A plus B uh, divided by 2 times by T. So here we effectively have the initial velocity and the final velocity. And then we divide that by 2 and then times by t. And that's our displacement, so we give it the letter S. So it's another way of looking at um, our second SUVAT equation here. So these two here is what you will be using for the rest of this video here. They're given to you in the formula booklet, so you don't need to remember them. But it's really important you know how to use them straight away. And here's a question in which we'll use one of them. A cyclist is travelling along a straight road. She accelerates at a constant rate 4 metres per second to a speed of 7.5 metres per second in 40 seconds. Find the distance travelled and the acceleration over the 40 seconds. So the way, that, uh, the way that I would look at this is by drawing a diagram first. The particle starts off at 4 metres per second, finishes at 7.5 metres per second, over a time period of 40 seconds. Okay, so what we're looking for first is to find the distance travelled. So in this case here, we're probably going to be using the second one, but it's always a good idea to write out S, U, V, A, and T and substitute in the numbers that you found from reading the question above. So S is unknown, U is 4, our starting speed, V is 7.5, our final speed, a we don't know, and T, the amount of time we've travelled for, is 40 seconds. So, applying SUVAT for the first question here, which formula are we going to use? Well, it's the formula that links these four letters together, S, U, V, and T, and it's this one here, the second one. 
So substituting our numbers into this formula here and finding out the answer, and we get 230 meters. Now it's not always going to be the case that you'll be finding this letter that starts the formula off. You could be finding V and you might know S, U and T. You just have to do a bit of rearranging after substituting in your numbers. So the first answer here is 230. Uh, part B is find the acceleration. So replace S with 230 here. And to find the acceleration, we know these. We, we need to know this one and we know these three variables. So we must be using the first of our SUVAT formulas. So substituting in the parts into your formula, and notice here how we're trying to find A. It's not at the start of the formula, so we may need to do a little bit of rearranging. So subtract 4, uh, this should be here 3.5, and divide by 40, uh, so that's 3.5 divided by 40, oops, 3.5 divided by 40, and we get yeah, 0.0875. Right then, so that's the answer to that question then. So, um, let's have another look at this one here. A particle moves in a straight line from point A to B, decelerates at 1.5 meters per second squared. Now in this question here, because it's decelerating, we're gonna have to set acceleration equal to minus 1.5. Uh, the speed of the particle at A is eight, and the speed of the particle at B is two. Find time taken and the distance traveled. So draw yourself a diagram, eight to start with, two to finish. Write out S, U, V, A, and T. Okay, and then choose the formula that you want to use. So we're looking here for the time taken. So it could be either one because both of them have got time in. Um, we need to work out time. We already have U, V, and A, U, V, and A. So we need to work out T. So it's probably this first one here because we have all three other letters in that formula, apart from T, which we want to find. With the second one here, we have two missing letters, so it would be very difficult to use that formula. So we're going to use V equals U plus AT, substitute in our numbers, rearrange the formula, and we get T is 4. So this um, deceleration has happened over 4 seconds. Now what you need to do next is replace T with the value 4, in your formula of your SUVAT expression up here. And then to find the distance, use the other formula. So S equals U plus V divided by two times T. Substitute in all the numbers and you get 20. So this distance traveled here is 20 meters. Okay, so there's another part to this question. Now after reaching B, the particle B continues to move along a straight right line at the same deceleration. Uh, the particle uh, is at point C six seconds after passing through A. Find uh, the velocity of particle at C and the distance travelled from A to C. Okay, so uh, the velocity travelled at C. So using a diagram, we'll continue this particle on until it's got an unknown velocity at uh, six seconds onwards from here and it's the same deceleration rate that we had before so try your best to plug these numbers into your formula your starting speed is still eight but you don't know how where you're finishing at um, where or how fast you're traveling at um, this is six seconds after passing through a so everything is always relative to a in this question here so six seconds after passing through a and it is still decelerating at the same rate. So we want to find first the velocity at C. So using our uh, U, V, A and T to use the first formula here. So substituting the values here and we get minus one. So uh, as the velocity is negative, this means that the particle has now changed direction, is heading back towards A. Velocity has a negative direction as well as a magnitude. Magnitude means the total amount that it's moving by. Uh, direction means whether it's positive or negative. In this case, negative, which means it's moving back towards A. So V is minus 1 in this case here. So given that it's travelled, it's coming backwards, we're going to be working out the distance from A to C um, so that's effectively the displacement from A to C. 
So in this case here we're going to be using the second formula because that gives us displacement. And in this case we get s equals 21. Now be really careful when you're substituting in v. v is a positive v in the formula, but as v is a negative value you're going to subtract 1 effectively. So here in this case s equals 21 meters. So it's 21 meters uh, from A to C. Uh, it's not traveled 21 meters in total because what will have happened is it will have traveled a certain distance and then come back round on itself. But uh, the displacement from A to C is 21 meters. So it will have traveled further than 21 meters, but the total distance from its starting point to its end point is 21. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here now. Pause the video and try them out. All right then, so question two here. As a car is approaching traffic lights, uh, the car is traveling with initial velocity of 10, so u is equal to 10. The driver applies the brakes to the car, and the car comes to rest with a constant deceleration in 16 seconds. Now, given that it's come to rest, that's a cheeky little clue that our final velocity is equal to zero here. Uh, Modelling the car as a particle, find the deceleration of the car. So A is what we want to find out. And it's deceleration, so our final answer is going to be positive as well. So here we're going to use um, V equals U plus AT. Uh, v is zero, U is 10, A we don't know, and t is 16, so we're going to put the 16 there. Taking the 10 onto the other side, and we get 16a. Now we're going to get a negative value here, but that's absolutely fine, uh, because we are expecting it to slow down, um, because it's coming up to the traffic lights, obviously. Make sure you read the question and note what the context is of the question. Now here it's 5 eighths, and what's the units? Well, it's meters per second in the question, and deceleration will be meters per second squared. It's the change of velocity over time. Um, and if you look at the units, it's meters per second over seconds. So that's going to be ms minus 1 times s minus 1, which will give us ms minus 2. OK, question 9 now. A skier traveling uh, in a straight line up a hill experiences a constant deceleration. Uh, at the bottom of the hill, the skier has a velocity of 16 meters per second, so that's probably final speed. Uh, and after moving up the hill for 40 seconds, he comes to rest. Uh, no, it seems as if traveling up a hill, so no, that's f initial speed if it's at the bottom of the hill and he's traveling up the hill. Um, so he comes to rest, so that's another cheeky clue that the final velocity is equal to zero. Time is 40 seconds that that's happened in, and we don't know A, and we don't know S. So part A of this question here is to find the deceleration rate. So in this case here, it's V equals U plus AT. V is 0, U is 16 plus 40A. Taking the 16 onto the other side, and dividing through by 4 or dividing through by 8, and we get minus 2 fifths uh, meters per second squared. So the deceleration rate here is equal to 0 0.4 meters per second squared. Part B, the distance from the bottom of the hill uh, to this point where the skier comes to rest. Uh, so in this case here, it's going to be S equals U plus V divided by 2 times by T. So in this case here, it's going to be 16 plus 0 over 2 times by time distance travelled. So that's going to be 8 times 40, which is 320. So 320 metres, that's pretty pretty far, given that the skier is travelling up the hill. Um, you're a pretty good going skier. All right then, so make sure you have lots of practice at these types of questions here. Maybe you've seen them before at GCSE, but have a go at them anyway. 
uh, and we'll have a look in the next video at some more different types of SUVAT formulas. So have lots of practice on this because we're going to make it a lot more difficult later on. Thanks very much for watching.